This video is proudly sponsored by Gamersgate. Download games anytime, anywhere. Visit Gamersgate.com. In this hour-long episode of Game Club, several of Grimrock's puzzles will be solved. If you wish to keep the puzzles spoiler-free, we suggest you stop this video right now. If you'd like to see a video review of Grimrock, a link for ElderGeek.com's video review can be found in the description below this video. Enjoy! Hello everybody, welcome back to Elder Geeks Game Club. This is episode number 22, The Legend of Grimrock. My name is Steve Wilkinson, and with me as always is Phil Summers. Phil, how are you doing tonight? I am good, how are you? I'm doing quite well, thank you very much. And of course, with us as always is editor-owner of ElderGeek.com, Randy Asenchek. How are you doing tonight, Randy? I am doing well, I am always with you. Every always. moment of the day. All the time. Wow. I'm, I'm, the like in, I'm in your backpack, at all moments. <laughs> I'm like the. You could be in somebody's backpack if they download. Well, uh, I was gonna say Elder Speak is a podcast, but it is not a. It's a YouTube thing, but I guess I could still be in your backpack. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> doing they well. Like a, if they were on like an MP3 player or something. Yeah. I am, I am everywhere. No, I'm doing well, man. A, a long day, long week. Uh, yep. Glad to be doing. Glad to be doing our show. What do we call yeah. the show again? We the, call it El the 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 game club, the Elder Geek Game Club. <laughs> and, Steve uh, almost forgot. <laughs> if you guys are, yeah, I'm gonna, wait. What do we call this show? Uh, if you guys are joining, yeah, us because for the first you just time, called it Legend of. Gr did you just call it Legend of Grim Grimrock? I don't think. No, he's, no, no. I said it was episode number okay. twenty-two, Legend of. Grimrock. Oh, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I threw the game title in there with the episode number this time, okay. just because I don't know. I felt like it needed a few extra syllables. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, hearing this show for the first time, uh, The Game Club is a podcast we do here at eldergeek.com. What we do is we select a game, usually an indie or retro or classic title, something that's a little smaller than your usual AAA, and um, we play it for a couple of weeks, the three of us, uh, and then we get together every other Thursday and record this podcast, and, and we discuss the game, you know, criticisms, things we like, things we didn't like. Uh, and put it into a podcast for all of you to enjoy, hopefully. Uh, this time around, we played the game Legend of Grimrock, which is a PC title. I don't think it's on Mac. I think it's just PC right now. Uh, and it's kind of a throwback title, uh, indie as well. Um, and I will let Phil go ahead and give us a little uh, history on the game. Sure. So as you said, it's a throwback, and it's a throwback to the old like first-person role-playing game like Dungeon Crawler. Uh, type of games. So, it's done by a Finnish development studio called uh, Almost Human. Uh, this is actually their first game as Almost Human. Um, they, uh, I guess when they started, they were actually doing like contract work for other companies, and I don't actually know mm -hmm. what games they assisted other companies with. But, as far as stuff that we know, and you know, that they have done. This is their first official project. So, it's made up of four guys. Um, when I found their names, I was only getting first names, so I don't know. I'm sure in the credits of, of Grimrock, the, the full names are there, but I only have first names to work with here. So, um, the... So, I guess the, the company's headed by Petri. And I, once again, I'm probably going to say every single name wrong, because I, <laughs> I do this every week. It's a tradition. On it the is. Game it Club, is a so. tradition. I, I, you know, it's an honor. If I get your name right, maybe something's wrong that day. Um, so he's a programmer, and he actually worked at Remedy before they started Almost Human, and he worked on Max Payne 2 and Alan Wake. So, you know, these guys, as, as you're going to see, they, they got some, they got good, like big games behind them. Um mm -hmm. Uh, the other guy, Ollie, is an, an animator. Uh, they apparently he was friends with uh, Petrie, and they actually used to work on like Amiga, Amiga projects together. And this is kind of cool. He worked at Future Mark on 3D Mark, which was something we actually talked about during the um, Unstoppable Borg episode. Um, and he worked on their other game, uh, Shattered Horizon. And then there is Juho, uh, the graphic artist, and he is also a former Future Mark employee. And with uh, Ali, they also he also worked on Shattered Horizon. And then there's Anti, which I'm probably saying wrong again. Uh, he's a designer, and he actually I say he's a designer because apparently he's kind of like the, uh, the the jack of all trades. He's kind of he's helped with like graphic work. He's done audio for them, so you know he's not just he, he, not as pigeonholed, I guess it seems. Um, 
But again, he also worked at Remedy and worked on Alan Wake as an environmental artist. And then mm. as far as the music goes, there's not much music in it, uh, but a um, composer by the name of Stacula did the theme music, and he actually did the theme music for Unstoppable Gorg, which, again, we covered in, what was that, three game clubs ago? Three or four? I think, yeah, three or four, yep. Yeah, so I thought I, when I was looking all this up, I thought that was kind of uh, like a fun connection, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. it's, that's interesting. I didn't realize... Yeah, I mean, playing the game, I didn't wouldn't have. I mean, I don't know why I would have, but I didn't get wouldn't have gotten the impression that these were guys that worked on you know Gorg and Alan Wake and games like that. Yeah, yeah, right. I guess because it's such a like, yeah, I guess almost old feeling game. I, mm-hmm. I guess right. So yeah, so they did Grimrock. They released it April 11th. And it's been very well received by critics so far, uh, especially Elder Geek. Randy, you did the review uh, on launch day, and you gave it a high uh, high marks. Did you, you did you give it a perfect score? I don't think I gave it a perfect score. I think I gave it a four out. Of, you know, when we when we give numeric scores, I think I gave it a four out of five. But I did give it a worth buying for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, very cool. Yeah, so uh, that's that's about it for the the history of, of Grimrock. And you know, I. They started the studio like a year ago, really. So they've they've hmm. created this game in a year, which I think is a pretty good turnaround time for for a first uh, product, especially yeah. since they're apparently working on other projects too. So you don't know how busy they were. Hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good turnaround time, really. One yeah. year. Yeah, probably probably less. So yeah, all that information I got from their Wikipedia entry and actually the uh, Grimrock uh, website. They had uh, some info on there too, like all the, especially the list of who they are and what they did. So, that is uh, Grim Rock. Cool. So that's that's I, our history. I, I'd like to commend you also on, and all of us really so far for not messing up and calling it the Legend of Grimlock, which uh, <laughs> me Grimlock, <laughs> which I almost have done about a hundred times, but yes, so I think yes. that makes up for the name mispronunciations a little bit. So. Good job, everyone. Yeah, I almost... Well, it's funny that you, you said that we almost called it the Legend of Grimlock, but in the video review, you'll actually hear me say that it's the Legend of Grimrock, but it, that's not the title. It's just Legend of Grimrock. Yes. Right. Yep. No and I, 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 I actually screwed that up, and nobody caught me on the video review, so thank God Oh, that's that. good. <laughs> <laughs> not even not even the developer caught me saying that wrong, but you, you get so used to putting the word the in front of legend in, yes. in video game titles. That is true. Yeah, just legend. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I wonder if I even said the legend just. Now. I think I did at the beginning of this did episode. You? I'm but... sure. I'm sure we all will. I'm sure we all. I'm sure <laughs> I will too. At least two more times before the end of this show. I'm gonna. I'm gonna count it out. Yeah. So, Phil, <laughs> what did you think about the legend of Grimrock? <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I'll go first because I feel like I, I I might have the least to say about the game. Okay. Um. I mean, I'll come out and say this is not my type of game generally i can't think of i mean maybe in the mid 90s there was i was actually asking my brother i was trying i was describing a game that it reminded me of that we played and i remember every like freaking video game i played and i actually couldn't remember the name of this game so my um experience with like you know these types of dungeon crawlers is it's i i I don't have much um so i went into this game you know uh I guess not having any kind of predetermined... I, I wasn't sure what I was going to think of it. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I want to do is I find... I always feel like these games are complex to me, which is, I think, another reason why I'm scared of them. Um, so I went into this game. I didn't want to, like, read how to play. I wanted to see if I could figure it all out. You know, mm-hmm. I, thought, I thought that was, like, a good test to give the game, see if I could just figure it out on my own. Uh, and I, I kind of actually did. Um, so, you know, I liked how... The interface is pretty intuitive, just as far as, you know, the movement's simple. You're using uh, WS, uh, WS, uh, WASD. WASD. Yes, WASD to, to move around, Q and E, move left and right. So it's, you know, very strict grid-based movement, like how these games would play. Um, so, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out as far as the menus go, clicking and dragging items, like, you know, that... I felt like that was all kind of like second nature. The only thing that I couldn't figure out was actually how to attack. That was driving me nuts. And it's so easy. <laughs> you just hit the um, 
the right mouse button on the item that your character is holding. They have like, there's a little menu in the corner, and it mm -hmm. shows their hands and what they're carrying. All you have to do is right click it. I'm sitting there left clicking. And, <laughs> uh, I got cornered by a snail in the beginning, and he was just. <laughs> I actually for that he was gonna kill me. I was gonna get killed by a snail. So for that, I actually did have to pause the game, and I had to I had to read how to attack because I couldn't figure it out. So that, <laughs> that was my <laughs> that's my shame. I didn't know how to attack in, in Grimrock. But um, I thought on a whole it was pretty easy to figure out. Uh, so speaking of the combat, I don't think I got... I, I only made it to level 3. I looked it up. There's like 13 levels. So, you know, obviously I only made it to level 3. I wasn't like taken in by the game because it's just not my thing. I don't think it's a bad game, but it just... It doesn't click with me. I mean... You know, you guys, have, I'm sure, have games that, that mm -hmm. just don't click. You know, you don't think they're bad. You just don't feel compelled to keep going. So, I mean, that's kind of how I felt. And, but I think it it's a, it seems like it's a good game for, for what it is. Um, the only thing I will argue and say is terrible is the combat. I think the combat is atrocious. Um, if anyone would, does anyone want to defend the, the combat? Um, well, the, the combat ahead, is. I was gonna say the combat is is meant to be that way to keep it with the style of of older RPGs of so, this this kind of nature. You know. All right. See, that's that was kind of what I wanted to, to find out mm -hmm. because, like I said, I haven't had many. I haven't had much experience playing these games. So I mean, you know, is like Eye of the Beholder. Is that turn based? The combat. How does the combat usually go in these games? Is it always you know real time? Uh, a lot of sometimes it is real time. Sometimes it's it's you know turn based, um, but but if it is real time, it's it's always like this where it's like real time turn based, which I guess would be like the equivalent of saying like active time battle as opposed to yeah. just standard turn based. Yeah, there's, yeah. Like, there's cooldowns on everything. And the yeah, mob, yeah, and I don't mind have... that. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind that so much. I just felt like you know a monster would come at you and. The goal is to just find the biggest room you can find, and you're just circling around the monster in like this really archaic way because you know your movement's archaic, and that's fine. That's, that's how the game was designed. I'm fine with that, but I'm just sitting there circling around these monsters, and half the time my attacks are missing. I mean, I picked the default characters. I didn't create any of them. Mm -hmm. I'm the, I'm a minotaur with like this stone hammer thing and I can't hit a snail. It's like I'm miss <laughs> the snail it keeps missing. Like it keeps saying miss, you know? And I'm just like, well, I'm a minotaur. How am I not hurting a snail? But I don't know. I, it was very frustrating. Like <clears throat> I didn't realize that the game was not like auto saving very often. So the no, first time I yeah. it does not auto save often at no, all. That was right. that was actually one of my big complaints was that there wasn't a, a pre built in like quick save key. Yeah, basically my, the... my my instinct is to like nail the F5 key, and I noticed that wasn't working. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and it looked like the only time it auto saves is when you get to those crystals, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, which uh, actually they yeah. come in very handy. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I kept going back to that thing. So, which I don't know, it looks like there was a timer on that as to how often you could save. But anyway, first time I played it, I didn't know about the whole auto save thing. So I got to the first like skeleton knight thing, right? Um. He comes marching out of the door, so of course I'm freaking running away backwards. Uh, and he corners me, and now I'm, I'm dead, because I'm cornered. You can't get out of the corner, you're stuck, and I don't know, like, why couldn't, I just wish I could have got out of the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and then I died, and then I died, and, it's, and then I had to start all the way at the beginning, because I didn't save it. So I was very frustrated, I didn't play it for about a week after that. Uh... And then I went again, and then I was very cautious this time. And I've killed many skeleton knights uh, since then. But, <laughs> yeah, the, the combat, to me, it was the weakest point. I, I didn't. I kind of liked exploring. I liked taking... I know it sounds so stupid, but I kind of liked taking the torches and using them for light. That reminded me of... I used to love Shadowgate. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminded me of that. Having mm -hmm. to always, you know, you know, make light for yourself. I thought that was cool. I, I enjoyed the the few puzzles that I encountered were pretty cool. Um, so I think I had some cool ideas. But, yeah, the combat really killed it for me. And I just think it's not really my, my type of game. So I'm definitely not... I am not the expert on this game tonight. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I will admit that 
you know, my opinion probably uh, does not matter too much tonight. But, you know, I, I made it as far as as far as I could get. I didn't, like, lose. I didn't get down to level 3. I was like, oh, I'm frustrated. I, lose. I just lost interest. Like, I made it down there, walked around. It was just kind of like, all right. I had my fill of Grimrock. I, I can understand that. I there, when I when I actually got the game, uh, I think I think they sent it to me on a Friday, and I was really kind of excited because I probably didn't have anything to do that Friday night, and I was like, "Yay, game for the weekend, a review!" And um, <laughs> I uh, I was actually emailing back and forth with the guy Ollie uh, on on their team, and, and he sends the game over, and he was like, "Let me know if you have any questions or if you run into any technical issues." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right, fine, whatever." It's a game. What kind of problems can I run into? You know, if it's technical, then I'll then I'll sure I could try to find a way to figure it out. But I got to the very first puzzle on the game, literally the very first puzzle on the game, where it just says loose rock on the wall, <laughs> and I probably spent two hours just going, oh "What my the God. hell do I do?" <laughs> Pounding my head, like trying everything. I was throwing rocks at stuff, and I was like, um, I was just going nuts, and I had to like walk away from the game, and I actually. I, I, like, hung my head in shame, and I sent uh, a note to the developer. I was like, I'm really sorry. I've never done this before. Like, I've never had to go to the <laughs> developers for help before. But what do I do with loose rock? And he, you know, he wrote back. He kind of laughed, and he sent along, like, a link to a video that they had where, where somebody had solved the loose rock video. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I got it. I see how tough you're going to be here, game. And, and at that point, I was kind of determined to keep getting further and further. So... Um, I guess once I understood like the the, the super logic. <laughs> freaking devious logic to the game, I was I was determined to get further and further. It, it's definitely a game that I, I can't sit down and play for like hours and hours on end. I, I will play for probably an hour and a half or so, but then when when my brain literally can't take it anymore, like and, and I'm not saying like the game will beat you down to the point where where your brain breaks, but like I just I couldn't handle some of the puzzles, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta think about this. My brain hurts from thinking too much. This is like high school all over again. <laughs> it's very draining. I, I, I get a similar feeling, uh, like when I played the old Resident Evil games. Like, uh, yeah, not, not bad, but just it's like taxing. You know, you're using. I don't know how to really describe it, but you, you, you. There's, there's a, there's a logic that you have to follow, and you have to figure out the logic. Is basically what it kind of boils down to. All right. And uh, and I was, you know, some of the puzzles I was just having a damn hard time with, and I had to put the game down for like a few hours at a at a time. And I was I was happy to say that I like completed it by the time the video review went up. But man, I was getting nervous because I was just I just kept getting stuck and stuck, and I had to keep putting the game down and, and walking away from it. But um, in the end, I I really like the game. Uh, I probably won't play it again anytime soon just because I, I have a ton of other stuff on my, my plate but uh, right. I would I would want it to like cool off a little bit before I forget some of the puzzles now I, I'll play it again so people have a video to watch this on YouTube um, but I'll probably be going through it as quickly as I can mm -hmm. right I don't I don't think I can get too far I'm curious that. to see how um, you actually play being an expert yeah I, hardly an expert dude. <laughs> hardly an expert <laughs> I do. I, I tell you what. I, I really loved the fact that you had to you had to figure everything out on your own. Like everything, mm -hmm. you had to figure yeah. out that you you couldn't attack from the back row with it with somebody with just a sword. Like you either needed a missile right. ranged person or somebody with a spear to reach through the, the yep. front row. I loved that. Yeah, I thought I that was cool. I love the fact that like you you had to figure out what the spells were. Like you could yeah. figure out you could find notes and stuff, but if you knew the spell, you could like write it down. And if you were if you had the time and the patience, you could experiment with spell combinations and figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't figure too many out. I think I figured yeah, out fire. What I was gonna do. say, yeah, I like the I like the spells too, and I liked that you could kind of like get them ready. You know, like you could mm -hmm. have the fire one all ready to go, and then the moment the bad guy shows up, you just wail them with it. Yeah, I like this. I liked casting the spells too. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I think I think there would be a really good replay value in this if you wanted to like. If uh, if you wanted to do it like four casters instead of like mixing it up, so you'd have like two fighters, a mage, and a rogue, which is probably the standard way to, to mix it up. If you had like all casters or all fighters or all rogues, and see how you could do with that, I, I right. would bet that all casters would probably do pretty well. Um, yeah, because my my guy was he was the only one doing real damage. Everybody else was missing. 
<laughs> <laughs> when you the further along you get, you you do find better and better equipment, and, and you do uh, you do start doing some real damage with your with your actual people. Um, I don't know. It was also kind of a neat mentality. Like it it, it made me like break some of the way I th- uh, break the way I thought about a lot of video games because you kind of go through this hoarding mentality when you play most video games. You're like, okay, I found that item. I'm just going to take it with me until I need it kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But in this, you you have a weight limit and you reach it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, you also find new equipment and there's no reason at all to save old equipment. None. Right. Right. But that that, that kind of goes against your gamer mentality. You, you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to find a town and I'm going to sell this stuff at the at the shop and get my five gold or whatever. Right. Right. There is none of that. It's There's just no currency in this game at all, right? No, no, that, it's just it's just eating and, and not dying. You yeah. Know? It's like survival fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I got to admit, the, the puzzles in the game, I loved them. Really did. Once once I got past loose rock, <laughs> I really I really loved the puzzles. Really yeah, did. I felt like uh, uh, there was one. I mean, it was so simple. It was just like an empty uh, torch thing. So I was like, I'm just gonna put a torch in here, and then like a, a wall opened up and it said secret unlocked. And I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I was rewarded for my curiosity. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I guess that's that's really about it that I have to say about Grimrock. I really really enjoyed it. I'm glad that they made it. Um, I thought it was, I loved the actual atmosphere of the dungeon. I love how like each layer had its own like personality almost. Um, yeah, yeah, and it looks. I think it looks really nice too. I like mm-hmm. the the uh, the walls and stuff are kind of repetitive, but I think they look good. You know, it doesn't look it doesn't look like a, like a cheap game or anything. You know, it no, not at all. Yeah, no, it's definitely it definitely has the feeling of of being a really well put together game. Right. Um, both from the look and, and, and just the way it plays. Like you were saying, the UI and everything works really well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I didn't have... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle, I guess. I, I had kind of the same reaction Phil had in the beginning when I first played it. Like, I think I I played it the night that we recorded the last episode. I had already okay. started playing it. <clears throat> like, right after we... After that I was finished. when I played <laughs> yeah, right after I finished editing the last episode of Game Club, I pretty much fired it up and started playing it. And um, I kind of ran into the same wall um, where I just, I don't know, something didn't click for me right away. And then I didn't really play it for a bit. But then when I got back into it, it was kind of like a slow, slowly building kind of, like I started getting more and more into it and enjoying it more and more uh, to the point where, you know, I, I was playing it a lot. Uh, and not, like a lot of times... Uh, some games that we've done for the show, um, I play them because I feel like I have to play it, you know, like mm-hmm, in time right. for us to do this. Sh- so I have enough to talk about and I, you know, I have a good idea of like what the game's all about and, and everything. This is a game where I, I found myself wanting to play it just because I was enjoying it and not uh, because I Not out like of I obligation. Ha- exactly, exactly. And I don't have a ton of experience playing this style of game from, from back in the day. Um, I never, I, I can't even remember any that I played that were like this. I know I must have um, because... We always had, my dad always had games like this installed, and we had PC in the house from as long as I can remember. So I'm sure I did, I just don't have a, a, a strong memory of it. But uh, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, the only problem I had with the game, and this kind of uh, limited my time that I could play it, was it was making me motion sick. And it's a weird thing for me. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it happens very randomly with different games uh, that are 3D. Uh, or, or where you're in a 3D environment. I don't mean like 3D, like the glasses. Um, right, right. I get motion sick. I don't know if it's the frame rate or the way you move or what it is exactly. And and I mean, I know it sounds silly to say frame rate in a game where you're basically standing still most of the time. <laughs> but as you move through those corridors, it kind of has that like a little bit of a head bob to it. And uh-huh. I think that might have been what was doing it. Uh, games that have done that to me in the past have been like uh, the original, like Duke Nukem. Uh, I remember Doom 64 destroyed me when I played that game. <laughs> I literally I had to like lay on the floor for like an hour after I played it for about 15 minutes. Um, uh, one of the like one of the co- random Call of Duty games, like one of the ones Treyarch made on the original Xbox, uh, the one of the in between Call of Duties. That one was another one that just completely. I, I, I was sitting there watching someone play it, and I had to leave the room and lay down. I wonder uh, if it's if it has to do with like the field of view, like you know how how. <laughs> 
you yeah, know. it's weird. It's random games. Like I can play Modern Warfare. I can play. Uh, I can play Counter Strike. I can play all those games for Quake Three. I could play those for hours and never have a problem. And then just like randomly, a game will come along and it just, yeah, it just screws me up pretty bad. And this was one of them. So I kind of had to limit my the spurts that I would play in. Um, and that was disappointing because I was actually really enjoying it. But yeah, there was a couple times where I was just like, it was like the room was spinning. So <laughs> that kind of sucked a little bit. But um. Uh, other than that, I mean, I really liked the puzzles. I thought that, that they were all really cool. I, I got, I got to the third floor as well. That was as far as I got. And I got, um, there was a puzzle on there that took me a hell of a long time. And it's the one where you get to, like, uh, it's a room and there's iron bars. And then there's that, whatever you call that stuff, the glowing stuff that teleports you around. <laughs> and it's, and it's moving. There's two things of it. And it's like a grid and it's moving in a pattern. And there's like an open trap door in the middle of the room. <laughs> the, and you, yeah, and that you, one. Yeah, you have to move up and you have to throw the rock onto the trap door uh, uh -huh. across the way, and then and then you gotta go in again, and then you can get to the middle and throw the other rock. And uh, yeah, so that took me a while to figure out. But once I got past that, I was like, oh man, I'm I feel great right now. But then I, I got a little further on that level, and I just kind of got I got to I there was a door with two keys, and I found one of the keys. Um, and then I just could not find the other one for the life of me. I ran around on that floor uh, for probably an hour, and, and, and I just couldn't find that other key. And I just was, that was, I think, uh, a night or so ago, and, and I just kind of stopped there. Um, Man, some of, the, some of the puzzles beyond that, you'll look back on that, that initial portal puzzle and be like, wow, that was a really easy one, because they, <laughs> they turn into hell after that. And some of them are just like, oh my god, game, what, what do you want from my life? What can I put into my computer that will help solve this? It's funny do you want that, my blood? I will put my blood into the computer. It's funny that you <laughs> use the word portal, um, and I don't know if you meant this intentionally, but uh, that puzzle in particular reminded me of portal. Yeah, it, that, I did. I, I, oh, okay, I, you I meant did. It, like, intentionally yeah it is okay. it is a very portal-esque puzzle yeah. right okay yeah that that was something that i that interested me about the game and, and will, will make me play it more uh because i am curious to see what the other puzzles are um the combat i thought was fine uh it it felt to me i mean i know you miss a lot in the beginning but that reminded me a lot of just playing like D D or something where like you're constantly missing because you roll because you roll. suck you right. just you just roll bad and that's just how it is and yeah whatever you know then when you do hit it's good um i like the spells i really like that one ice spell the one that was kind of like an aoe like it would kind of get everything in its path yeah the, the, that was a cool one the spikes come up out of the ground that was that was fun to use um i didn't do the thing uh i i did found out about this i held off on on watching your review randy only because i didn't want to be influenced by what you said but after uh -huh. i had spent some time i went back and watched it and i was seeing how you were doing the thing where you and phil you were talking about this how you kind of strafe around the enemies and it's funny because i never did that i just kind of stood there and took the beat oh really oh, oh really yeah. oh wow oh, and then boy. after i after i watched your review i then started trying to do that more um and i had mixed results because sometimes i i just like moving and then and then switching real quick to, to turn to face this them from the side like i wasn't doing it fast enough and they were just they would just turn and get me anyway so i was like ah screw this i'll just that do shit it. would make you real dizzy yeah. yeah, well, that, that was the other thing. Yeah. See, the um, thing is, you don't you don't necessarily like, chase them. You just sidestep and then turn and wait for them to get on the to the to the pad right. next to you. You smack them and then you sidestep them right. immediately afterwards. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I I, I like the uh, I love the whole alchemy thing in there or, or making potions. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Uh, once once I got starting doing that. Because um, then I was making anti venom potions, making health potions, and that was kind of helping. I also, once I realized that you could uh, hit the sleep thing and, uh -huh. and, and wait, and you could just basically sit there and watch all your health bars and everything go up. Oh, I didn't see that. That's yeah. cool. Oh, I love. I just love the story, like the the hidden story that kind of comes up about Grimrock as mm -hmm. you sleep. I love that. Yeah, that yeah, was the, my like favorite. the messages, the the uh -huh. voice talking to you. Yeah, yeah that was, was pretty cool. Yeah, th I loved those. They're just like you know. You know, this used to be a dungeon, but it's not so much a dungeon. Curious, don't you think? And it's like, yeah, that is curious. Why are all these traps here if it's just supposed to be a dungeon? Right. Tell me more, game. Yeah, yeah, that that was cool, and I didn't expect that at all uh, when I when I first did the sleep thing because I was just doing it to regain mana and and, and health and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, just a it's a cool game. I, I mean, I really I like that these guys did this. I mean, to go 
back to a style of game that just basically doesn't exist anymore and to bring it back in such an authentic way uh, I think that that's really cool. Uh, I'd like to see more stuff like this and, and I think we're going to start seeing more with all the Kickstarters with all these old franchises and everything coming back. I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing kind of like a return to the these old style uh, games. It, it's cool. I really hope so, man, because we're, we're actually... I, if, if there's one thing about this generation that I kind of hate, hate the most, it's the fact that we have lost so many good genres this generation. Like, mm -hmm. The JRPG has essentially just gone away, except for like the smallest of publishers. Yeah, I know Final Fantasy 13 and crap came out, but the, you know, they, they fell off the wagon, basically. Right. Um, yeah, it seems like uh, Atlas is the only one kind of carrying the torch. Right, one right. Of the, or one of the only ones. I'm sure there's others well, as well. But one of the few. The yeah. One that sticks out in my mind. S the um, stealth genre is pretty much shot in the butt right now. You know, we're this, this is the generation where, where we're switching over to... I don't know. Open world third person action games. Yeah. Which I which I enjoy, but but I also enjoy these these other genres too that we've kind of fallen well, away from. Well, you know, the other thing is that and, and I mean this is going to get us on a little bit of a tangent, but I think that the way that the industry has been over the last 4 or 5 years with studios closing down left and right and just I, I don't know that that can sustain itself much longer with these companies making these big huge uh, third person uh, open world type games that uh -huh. cost millions and millions of dollars and require huge teams of people to develop and then uh, enormous marketing budgets and then they don't sell well and then you know uh, that that's kind of where all the the sour grapes have been coming in about used game all these other things game used game sales everything else which are just kind of symptoms of the larger problem yeah. and it, and it makes me wonder uh, you know if going back and having a game like this which was like Phil said was made in under a year uh, that kind of goes back to an old style and revisits something that was ki has kind of been forgotten in the last decade or so. Uh, it, if that's really kind of where things are headed going forward, um, because this game, I mean, you know, we always joke about Phil's PC, but it's you know he's he's got a, a little bit older of a PC and it ran great for him. So they were able to like create something that looks good and runs good on on a variety of hardware. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's it's a good thing. I, I, I hope that... Uh, I don't know how this game sold. I mean, I know it did well on Metacritic, but I, I hope it's doing well. I, I, think, it, I think it did sell well. And this, this also kind of go It tags on pretty well with what you were saying about, about genres kind of coming back through Kickstarters and through smaller companies. And Amnesia, The Dark Descent. This game actually reminds me of Amnesia mm. in a number of ways. But... Uh, and one of them is actually the revitalization of, of an otherwise dead genre. You know, Amnesia brought back the survival horror genre, um, and this is bringing back the, the you know, dungeon crawly first person, um, you know, role playing game. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't, I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even know if there's a specific name for that type of role playing. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure either. I had the beholder when, type game. When I think, yeah, when I say think of dungeon crawler, I typically think of like like Diablo, or, right, or something right. like that, or or, Bald, or what the one Baldur's Gate that was kind of like a dungeon crawler. Maze crawler. Maze crawler. There, yeah. that's, I guess yeah. that's a better term for them. I, I like that. <laughs> we, we officially coined it. Maze crawler. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, yeah, this is a, a really good game, and and if anybody listening to this hasn't checked it out, I mean, I would say, I mean, if you're on the fence, uh, maybe these guys will put out a demo or something at some point. That would be nice, I guess, mm -hmm. just to kind of you know if they clear that up on Steam uh, to kind of get people who aren't sure. But uh, right. otherwise, I mean, it's an inexpensive game. It's only 15 bucks, and it's uh, like. It seems said, like you get a lot for. I mean, the game looks like it's really long. Too. It's thirteen, yeah, thirteen levels. And thirteen brain racking levels. Right, yeah. and yeah, and when we say level, it's not like a like a fifteen minute thing. It's you know no. each level is is a, is a pretty solid time investment. <laughs> each uh, level is an endurance test for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and and it's definitely. I mean, for for people who uh, uh, have kind of feel that um, games have gotten too handholdy and that. Uh, you know, we've kind of gotten away from from the discovery and and, and stuff like that. Uh, this is definitely uh, has your name on it because this game doesn't hold your hand. Uh, you're given very little information. You're just kind of tossed into this situation, and and you just kind of got to figure it out. And and it's it's rewarding. Uh, 
I, I don't know. I don't remember if you said this on the last podcast, Randy, but I, I think that was what you call. I think that might have been the word you used was rewarding, or, or you felt really satisfied when you figured out the first uh, initial puzzle, um, or, or whatever it was, however you had put it. But uh, I, I think that's that rings true with a game like this. It, it's yeah, really a it's... game where where you feel like you've invested something, and and it's. Uh, you've been rewarded. I feel more rewarded figuring out some of these puzzles than I than I did completing other games. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt better. I, there was there was more of a sense. I, I I keep calling it that that aha moment because mm-hmm. because it's 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 more than that. The game is rewarding you. You're you're actually mentally rewarding yourself. Like holy crap, you did it, kind of thing. You right. Know? And and it was a it was a mental feat that you 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 accomplished it not necessarily a, a, a dexterity of thumbs feet or a, a yeah a dexterity of thumbs kind of kind of accomplishment yeah I, and like it, it yeah it's, it's a strange it's, it's a strange feeling because a, a comparison i would make would be like playing a game like like wow like world of warcraft where you you run a dungeon over and over and over again to save up the the tokens and the currency and then you go buy a pair of like tier 11 pants which are epic pants and they're like ep- <laughs> I'm sure now they're they're outdated, but at the time that it's like, wow, these are these are amazing. This this piece of gear I just got is is so awesome, and I grinded this dungeon a hundred times. I'm exaggerating, but you know to get it. But then in this game, like I'm going through here and I find a pair like a loincloth, and it like adds like two like two attack power, and I'm like, oh yeah, man, I need these really bad right now because. So I, 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 it's just a totally different feeling uh, as far as uh, you know, getting excited about reward when when it's kind of not just like handed out to you constantly. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I will say one final thing about the game. The game is the game is gonna have legs even beyond its initial release because there's there's a drop down on there that says dungeon and then Grimrock is the first one that's kind of checked off. Mm-hmm. So oh yeah, I was gonna they're, ask. They're, yeah, they're, that. I, I, I guarantee just... you they're going to open that up for like people making their own dungeons or even them making a few extra dungeons for themselves. Yeah, I, I thought I had heard that this game was going to have a dungeon editor for it at some point. So, and that will that will make this a, a replayable game for years. For sure. Yeah. One thing I would one thing I will say that I would have liked to have seen, and maybe this, I, I guess this maybe would have taken away from it a little bit, but I would have maybe liked to have been able to hotkey some of my st- like attacks and stuff to like w- one through six or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Would have been kind of nice, but that's a small gripe, and I, I get that, like, you know, clicking around on all the stuff and the spells, and, and that kind of adds to the, the whole level. the whole challenge and experience. So I, I get that, but, I, you know, that that's just a small, like, me. And, and maybe that would have been kind of too modern of an idea for a game that... I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, like, I, I, think, I think this game has that sense of authenticity... That that might have been lost had they had a hot bar where you could like put your shit on there, you know? Yeah. And and keybind things. I just wanted that quick save key, baby. Quick save <laughs> key would have been all right. That would have been fine. But yeah, I loved once I found that crystal and I was like kept going back to it all the time. <laughs> like if I got into a bad fight and like like someone one of my party members was dead and like everyone else was yeah. like beat up, I would just go run haul ass back to that thing. Yeah. And usually by then enough time had passed that I could use it again. Um, I was so relieved when I discovered that it it resurrected dead people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't sure up until that point, because yeah. it doesn't tell you. I was like, is dead dead? Does that just yeah. mean, like, I have three people now? Is that is that how it's going to be? Pretty much if you have one person dead, you're you're pretty much dead anyway. Right. <laughs> you know, you're not going to survive too many I had one fight. There, there was that one fight where the skeletons, you're in the room, and there's a trap door in the middle, and you can uh, trigger the trap door, and, like, four skeletons come yeah. out. Uh, and I was down to one person on that one, and that was when I discovered that I could make the skeletons fall down the trap door. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, look at you, Mr. Clever Pants. So that was the only way, like, I started strafing around and, like, trying to get him to walk onto it, and then I would hit the trap, and he... So you conquered that room? Yeah. You like, oh, I avoided that room. I went in there, and I died, and then <laughs> I went back, I threw a rock at the switch from the gate, uh-huh. and that locked it in, and then I just kind of watched him walk around for a while, and I was like, all right, I guess I can't defeat them. <laughs> Yeah, so I, cool. I literally I had one person left. It was my my human warrior guy, my my minotaur, my caster, and my rogue chick. They were all dead, and I just uh, had the one guy. And at that point, I was some I did it by accident the first time. Wow. I I was on the thing and I like stepped off it, and the skeleton fell down. I was like, oh, 
<laughs> and then I just yeah. I just repeated that. I think I had killed maybe two of them, and there were two left, and it was just wow. me. And then the one fell down, and then I got the other one to fall down. I'm surprised too. I didn't think of that because I did it to the snails. I made the snails fall down the hole. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Earlier than that. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, uh, great uh, again, just an example of like how how fun it is to kind of discover things and and kind of. Uh, figure things out that maybe you know weren't even intended you know i guess i could have killed them i would have gotten xp had i actually killed them which would have been good but by right. the same by the same token i probably would not have killed them both with were my... there rewards in that room like once they were gone like their little closets where they like, i think there was there? i think in those in the extremities like where they come out of i think there's like a couple of shirts and stuff like that back yeah there, if, if i remember correctly yeah there was something like i don't think there was anything major in like a key or anything like that right there. right but uh, yeah, there there might have just been some gear. So oh, yeah, my. I give yeah. I give uh, I give Grimrock a uh, an absolutely worth worth buying, worth checking out, um, for sure. Yeah, I still I still keep my rating as well. Definitely worth buying. I, I love that game. I'll do worth trying because it's not my thing, but I thought what it was was well done. And you know, if you're on the fence about these kind of games like me, you know, give it a shot. Maybe you know. You got nothing to lose. So. Yeah, I mean it's one of those ga one of those games that I'm sure inevitably is going to be on a Steam sale. And if you're the type of person that's not sure if this is the type of game for you, wait for something like that to happen, or, or Gamers Gate, or whoever, whoever has it on sale. I'm sure. Good old games or whatever. I'm sure one one if not all of them will at some point have it heavily discounted. So if you're on the fence, wait for that. I would love to see them put a demo out. I, I really would like to see that become more of a uh, commonplace thing with with games. But I, I don't know what's involved in that as far as from a developer standpoint, what actual work has to go into creating a demo. Yeah, it may not be worth the uh, return on investment. Right. This game would uh, port well to different uh, platforms too. I mean, that's probably another thing that's not worth it, but. Um, it could be a cool iPad game, you know, or yeah, anything. Absolutely. It could be it could be a cool Wii U game, it could be a cool Vita game. So, yeah, any any yeah, any touch screen. Yeah, I didn't really think about that, but yeah, yeah it would anything, actually work really like, well. I, I, that was kind of what I thought. I was like this would be cool to play like on DS, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so it'd Man, be a those, cool game. Those to... maps would be would be hell on your eyes though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah, one? like I yeah, but it'd be I think it'd be great iPad, great Wii U game. It would work well for. I like how I'm saying great thing for something that doesn't even exist yet. I'm just like assuming we you like the way the tablet works. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think it would work well on those platforms. So right on. Or Vita, it's got that big touch screen, you know. Work. You've got to do like, the combo. The combo touch screen control, you know, would work pretty good. You yeah, got to do something with that. Vita. You don't want to just be like <laughs> making Nathan Drake jump jump around. You, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because the whole yeah. interface is is clicking and dragging things, you know. So, works well for screen for touch screens, I, I would think. Yes, yes. But I don't know. That's probably not worth it. Not, I don't like you know, not worth it for that to for them to spend their resources and you know, right, support gotcha. it to these. Well, yeah. Maybe for iPad, it could be worth it for iPad. Yeah, yeah, I could see a game like this doing real well on there, getting featured and everything, and kind of, you know, there's nothing really else like that on the iPad, so yeah, uh, it would definitely, I think, get uh, some fanfare. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll kind of wrap this one up and start getting into the next things. Next time around on the Game Club, we are going to be playing Another World, also known as Out of This World, uh, which is a classic uh, game. <laughs> which you can play on PC and Mac. Uh, it's available on Gamersgate and other places as well. Uh, so we'll be playing that, and if you guys would like to play along and submit some comments, feedback about the game, uh, we will happily read them on the next episode of the show. Yeah. Uh, so have so neither of you guys have played Out of This World? Nope. Nope. No, I missed it. It's a game I've always, always wanted to play, and I missed it. I'm sorry, I'll always call it Out of This World, because that was just how it was introduced to me as, but uh, yes, Another World, as everybody, most people probably know what is that now, but alright, you guys never played it, I'm very, very curious to see uh, what you guys think of this game, and how far you get. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's actually very short, it's a short, like, if you know what you're doing, you could probably cruise through it in 45 minutes, mm -hmm. but, cool. uh, 
but it's hard. It's yeah. it's. Diff- I, I'm actually curious to. It, for me, it's been so many years mm-hmm. that I, I mean, I, I'm sure I forget so much. So I'm very curious to go back to it. I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I think it'll be a good one. It's. Uh, it, we've been playing a lot of kind of retro indie games like this, and and it, it's been a while since we've played the legitimately uh, retro, retro game. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so please uh, look forward to the next episode of Game Club where we will be talking about Another World. And if you enjoy this episode of the Game Club, uh, either through YouTube or, or uh, iTunes, however you're, you're acquiring this, uh, we would certainly appreciate any sort of feedback. Uh, subscribe to Elder Geek's YouTube channel. Give us some reviews on uh, iTunes or Zune. Uh, we greatly appreciate any support you guys are willing to give us. Uh, that would be awesome because we love our listeners and we are always looking to find more. So any help you can give us, uh, we would appreciate it. So be sure to head over to eldergeek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, check out our Twitch TV channel. There's always a lot of good stuff going on over there. And that pretty much does it. We will see you next time. Uh, For myself, Steve, and Phil and Randy, thank you very much for listening. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, have a good night.